<laughs> All right, guys, we are in Isaiah 16, which is Moab destroyed. If you guys are following along with the playlist, you already know where we're at and what's going on. And it is getting very graphic. I suspect this chapter will be no less graphic. And some of the revelations that are coming out of this are really good. <laughs> Again, there's far too much here we can cover in one video. Uh, it would take a separate study to go and look at all these things. But wow, just the stuff we're seeing, just reading it, is awesome. And so without delay, let's get right into this. Because I've become very excited about reading this, through this book. Moab destroyed. Isaiah 16. Send the lamb to the ruler of the land, from Selah to the wilderness, to the mount of the daughter of Zion. For it shall be as a wandering bird thrown out of the nest. So shall be the daughters of Moab at the fords of the Arnon. Take counsel. How, how appropriate. <laughs> what we talked about this morning. Take counsel. Execute judgment. Make your shadow like the night in the middle of the day. Hide the outcast. Do not betray him who escapes. Let my outcasts dwell with you, O Moab. Be a shelter to them from the face of the spoiler, for the extortioner is at an end. Devastation ceases. The oppressors are consumed out of the land. In mercy the throne will be established, and one will sit on it in truth. Who is that? Jesus Christ. In the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking justice and hastening righteousness. That's Jesus Christ, guys. That's the end of the tribulation right there. Verse 6, we have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud. Of his haughtiness and his pride and his wrath, but his lies shall not be so. Therefore Moab shall wait, or sorry, therefore Moab shall wail for Moab. Everyone shall wail. For the foundations of Ker Haraseth you shall mourn. Surely they are stricken. For the fields of Heshbon languish, and the vine of Sibma. The lords of the nations have broken down its choice plants, which have reached to Jazer and wandered through the wilderness. Her branches are stretched out, they are gone over the sea. Guys, this is all allegory or, or, or a picture of people and leaders and, and, and people's moving and stuff like that. Because how do branches stretch out over the sea? They are gone over the sea. Well, that's people moving to other countries. Therefore, verse 9, I will bewail the vine of Sibma. That's a, a family line. With the weeping of Jazer, I will drench you with my tears, O Heshbon and Elile. For battle cries have fallen over your summer fruits and your harvests. Gladness is taken away, and joy from the plentiful field. In the vineyards there will be no singing, nor will there be shouting. No treaders will tread out wine in the presses. I have made their shouting cease. Therefore my heart shall resound like a harp for Moab, and my inner being for ker And it shall come to pass, when it is seen that Moab is weary, from the, or weary on the high place, that he will come to his sanctuary to pray, but he will not prevail. This is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning Moab since that time. Since that time? Hmm. Since what time? <laughs> Verse 14, But now the Lord has spoken, saying, Within three years, as the years of a hired man, the glory of Moab will be despised with all that great multitude, and the remnant will be very small and feeble. So, within the prophecy given, we see far-reaching implications over millennia, over generations. Here, he seals it home and says, okay, this is for this time frame, and I've given you the time frame. Amazing enough, he says within three years. Could he mean 3,000? Because a lot of that kind of fits in that time frame. So, yeah. Kind of interesting. He's talking about their time and a future time at the exact same time. And I love how it's put together here because you read it and it's like, okay, that's not really talking about vines. That's talking about home or um, a, a, a family line, a, a generation of people from that particular name. He's not talking about 
um, vines growing out towards these other countries, it's people moving to those countries. You start to realize this is all this is all telling the last several thousand years. Amazing. Amazing. That's why I love the book of Isaiah. I think that's why Jesus did too, because there was so much poetic ex explanation in there. And it leads someone to start to think, whoa, that's ve getting very specific. I think if you do a little digging, you'll find out some of these cities weren't around back then that he's named. But they might be around today. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And it tells a story. It tells a tale of what's going to happen. It gives us more insight and more details into the future events that are going to happen. This is these, these exact same areas. Helps us understand more of what's coming. Now, tomorrow's video will be Isaiah 17, and this one changes. This is proclamation against Syria and Israel. It's coming home now. Did you know Syria is just north? So this one really ought to jump out because we're going to see a lot of very uh, familiar names here and it's going to really call to question, you know, is this talking about past events or future events or both? Because we're going to see a lot of stuff like verse 4, for example, in that day it shall come to pass. What day? What day are we talking about here? So we'll see that in tomorrow's video. Guys, today was Isaiah 16. Quick one. But nonetheless, exciting. I love verse 3. Take counsel. Execute judgment. What kind of judgment? Execute judgment on yourself. What should I be doing? Execute judgment on what you should do concerning others. Take counsel. Take counsel. Take counsel. Take counsel from God. God, what do you want me to do? Lord, where should I go? Lord, what's the right thing to do in this situation? He will show you every time. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.